Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking around the globe, one of the greatest issues that we face as we move towards 2050 and through the 21st century, of course, is access to potable water. And so we're adding more and more people to the planet. We're uh, going to about 9 billion people by 2038. Uh, we're not far from that already. And yet at the same time, we only have uh, just a, you know, a very low percentage of the water that's potable anyway. And so we have to look for how we're going to create new water. We have Alan M. Weiss. He's the president, CEO, and inventor of Global Water Group. And this is the, the state of the globe as far as water is concerned and the demand for new water. And this is how the Global Water Group. And most people, Alan, thank you for being with us. I think of water that looks like this. Uh, but yet we're looking at a map that looks like this. What is the stress and what is the dichotomy between you know what we really have and this ideal that we're looking at right here well the problem with the water in the world as you said there's a very small percentage of potable water there's only one percent and the rest of it is salt water and therefore uh if we start and continue as we have been doing contaminating our drinking water we're reducing that to become a very dangerous level. And in the future, we're growing so fast, it, we will lose that water. So we have to do something. Now, looking at uh, this, the modular, mobile, deployable, off grid, you know, all these, uh, these nice uh, platitudes for these systems. But yet the whole thing is, is that we got to get away from what we are doing into what we need to be doing. So what are we doing now and why do we need to be moving to these new systems to create what we're now calling new water? Well, first of all, all of the existing municipal systems in the world uh, use a process to move water. They don't really purify water. So whatever they're putting through the system has the problems of their source water. So if there are parasites in the source water, you get parasites. If you have hazardous chemicals in your water, you get hazardous chemicals coming through. And then we dirty the water, and then we put that downstream for the next city or town or village to drink it. Hmm. Now, looking at this, why are we going to these modular mobile types of units? In other words, distributed uh, water, wastewater treatment, instead of having a grid-centric based water system. Well, first of all, it eliminates a lot of the infrastructure being the piping that would go into systems that are modularized. Second of all, you can grow a system a lot easier if you start with a base module and then your population grows, so you grow with it. Mm -hmm. But it's also less costly to build, easier to operate, and much more efficient. Now, looking at the system in front of us, this is the one that you've been talking about. You've actually uh, evolved these. And so what are we looking at here? And why is this so different uh, than the grid-centric type systems that we have today? Well, what we have today are in the wastewater business is a system that is designed to create sludge. And then they haul away the sludge and dump it somewhere. They burn it in the air. They use it for fertilizer. But it's got bad stuff in there. 
-hmm. But that's the system that was has been used forever. Mm -hmm. Along the, the way, we learned that you could be much more efficient with an aerobic system that does not create sludge in any form or fashion, and that the rest of the parts of the system don't create organic sludge at all. So our systems are designed never to have organic sludge. We use air and enzymes and it creates bacteria that eat up all the sludge and we don't let anything through the system that has organic sludge. Mm -hmm. At the end of the system, the effluent coming out is much cleaner and clearer and then we go through the most unique proprietary patented systems to purify the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is the distinction that you make is not just uh, filtered water, uh, but you're really actually purifying the water. So we're standing in front of uh, one of these units, and this is going back to this design that we have up here. Uh, we're going to get to something that actually really shows this in detail. But why is this system so small and what, what can you do with this uh, versus these huge systems, some of them that take, uh, you know, tens up to hundreds of acres? Well, everything has its own need. Mm -hmm. And that's how we design systems. Size makes no difference. We've been in the business of making water systems for the U.S. military for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And the things we learned is be modular, be able to connect them together. This small box actually is a wastewater system to pure clean up. It totally gets rid of all of the sludge and purifies all of the output for 2,500 gallons a day. And this was purchased by the EOD, the Explosive Ordnance Division of the Navy and the Navy SEALs. And here it is being loaded on a container. Just now, that the, simple. Mm -hmm. The amazing part about this, this is an entire uh, water purification system in this little 20 foot container. That's actually 10 feet. Is that 10 feet? Oh my That's goodness. That's in, in amazing. I've never even seen a 10 foot container before, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's definitely modular. Now let's go through this. This is really the essence of what it is you're doing and how you go from uh, gray, brown, or even black water into pure drinking water. What you see there is a control system starts with a computer, which is on the black screen on the first unit there. And that computer controls all of the other computer boxes that are in there. Mm -hmm. So that controls the air in the digester, uh, all of the process that goes through the clarifier. So the vacuums vacuum up all of the suspended solids or suck mm -hmm. them down and pull them all back to the digester. They take it through a recycling process and the recycling process, when it fills, it has to get back flushed. And when that water comes through, it goes through water purification. And the computer controls all of it with a series of valves that just change everything one direction, another direction, or another direction automatically. Mm -hmm. There's no hands on. Yeah, this is absolutely an amazing system. Now, looking at this type of container, this is going out to uh, remote areas. And so are we seeing the very same thing here we saw uh, earlier uh, as far as the intake and then the output of uh, clean, pure water? That's correct. This unit was about 8,000 gallons a day. And the lid that you see, the roof door on the left is over the digester. The roof door in the middle of the container is over the clarifier. And the other end of the container is all the computer equipment, the recycler and the water purification. And that's mobile, easy to move around. And that happened to be right by a beautiful yacht basin in Long Island, New York. <laughs> I tell you, that, that's absolutely fantastic. And so this is something actually can uh, can be manufactured. You pick it up, uh, put it on the shipping container or go over land if you're within the United States, set it down. And it's how long does it take to actually activate the system? Once we build it, it takes a day. Mm -hmm. It actually, we can train a military person 
uh, that would probably be trained with their equipment for a week mm -hmm. and they'd have five technicians. We train uh, two 18 year olds in two hours and they're experts. Mm -hmm. The that, computer that's... does the work. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we looking at here and how is this the uh, essence of what it is that you're doing? Well, if we had to uh, take care of a, a million gallons a day instead of 2,500, uh, this is a cluster. Each of those first five container illustrations are 200,000 gallons a day. And the last uh, piece of equipment on the left is the recyclers and the, the water purification and the computer controls. So there's a million gallons a day. If you have 5 million gallons a day, make five clusters and network mm -hmm. them together. If you have 50 million gallons a day, then you just keep adding clusters and they're smaller than an equivalent part of an existing old style wastewater system. That's what I find amazing because I've been in many of these uh, plants worldwide uh, and they are huge systems. And yet you're taking, you're making them very modular. You pick them up, you move them around. And uh, this is look at it as they're, uh, you know, moving these things. So what it is that you move them with and how long does it take to actually join these together so that they actually start and be operating? Well, actually, these are containers in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. So they just go up on a flatbed and they're hoisted in and they're put up on a uh, and a ship to a cargo ship to take them wherever they're going to go and dropped into place. Mm -hmm. In this instance, that was a 40 foot uh, system that was in two 20 foot segments. Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is connecting hoses in between. And the military wanted them in 20 foot segments so they could put them on a, on a plane and ship mm -hmm. them somewhere. I see. So it, again, it's uh, having them as modulars and get them there. Now, looking at uh, your factory, so actually you uh, design, draw, uh, lay these out, put them together, and then you can put them in the containers as we just saw here. And so these actually are outfitted as uh, complete systems then. We were in the process of making uh, six complete systems for mm -hmm. six base camps in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. And these uh, go, as you say, on these trailers, take them off to the seaport if you're going to ship these overseas. And that makes it uh, very, very easy. Now, looking at your collaborators, the ones that are actually using this, uh, want to be using it. What is so significant about uh, these organizations? Because these are huge. They're well known all over the globe, yet they're using your systems. Well, we have the only system of its kind in the planet. And it's, we are now patented in over 40 countries. So if someone was to be regulated to use this type of systems, get rid of all sludge and end up with potable water, there's only one place to go. But that's those, all the different military branches, different companies that manufacture for the military, because military was our business for a, about 30 years, 90% of what we did was military. We also deal with Exxon Mobil, with drilling rigs, and we've dealt with Disneyland because they wanted an emergency water purification system. So if Mickey Mouse loves us, everyone should. <laughs> Uh, where is the Global Water Group going over the next 5, 10, or 15 years? And you have 10 seconds, and that's it. We are going to be the system for all future development. That's a great answer. Thank you very much, Alan M. Weiss, as we create the Emerald Planet.